Hi, um, today I'm going to talk about um, decision trees, uh, random forests, as well as um, backing and boosting. So um, first of all, I'm going to do the I'm going to do um, examples for decision decision trees on a classification problem as well as a regression problem. So here I'm going to load the data and then um, make the dependent variable as a, as a, uh, into two uh, categories and then I'm going to separate them by uh, test and train uh, data set then I'm going to apply this uh, tree method and then we can see for this uh, uh, classification problem we can see the, the prediction that uh, we're doing um, for, uh, for the two categories and then to improve the to improve the prediction, we can use uh, cross validation. So we can see that um, it seems like um, so when the tree size is um, equal to three, then could is our best uh, has we have the lowest um, uh, MSE. So I'm going to change this to three, and then do another prediction. So we can see that um, for the uh, or the other uh, like 139 that are to, that are correctly predicted, whereas in the previous one we have 131. So actually we are improving a little bit at this time. So I can see the decision. So since uh, yeah we have uh, a smaller trees, so um, um, so uh, which. Um, which leads to the improvement to the prediction. So um, by by using a smaller tree, you can actually avoiding uh, we are avoiding uh, overfitting since um, we know since uh, remember that uh, the tree method is always making their best. Um, um, so on in each node, the tree the tree method is always making the best um, decision on each node. So. So there's no uh so the, the this algorithm uh does does not like um recognize if I sacrifice um if I make a if I don't, if I'm not making the best split here I might get another best uh, I might get a better split on the second one, but the tree method doesn't work like that. So it will all it will so whenever it hit it reach a node it will always make the best split. So that um, it is it is more likely to, to to be overfitting. So if you make a smaller trees, then um, it is you are more likely to pre to prevent that kind of uh, error. So uh, that's why we can see that um, if we are not uh, making if we not did not if we did not um, set up a threshold on the on the tree size, then uh, we can actually get a larger a large a much larger tree, but that could be an overfitting model, which can, which may not lead to an improvement in the prediction. So now I'm going to do a regression uh, regression uh, tree. So basically the same method, you call the tree and then you make the prediction and you can calculate the MSE. And then to improve this, we're going to use cross validation. The logic is the same. Uh, the only difference is that um, we, when we make the prediction, uh, we have to um, we have to uh, specify that the type is equal to class. Whereas in uh, regression uh, regression uh, problems, we don't have to do anything. Just um, calculate. We're just uh, using the same method and the same logic. Where we calculate the MSC, and then to improve the algorithm, we're going to use cross validation. So we can see that um, actually, actually the best tree is the. Um, let me see if I can do a, uh, find an example. So if I set C equal to one, then uh, my first uh, my first attempt I get a uh, twenty one, and then let's see. Yeah, so it seems like the the largest tree has the has the lowest MSE. But I'm going just to sh let's so let me just stop um, at four. So let's see if um, maybe I think the MSE will be slightly um, uh, more. It will be will be higher than twenty one. But um, we can still we can see yeah. 
so uh so in this example uh it's just that um it seems like the the best um let me just try it. um so if i tr if i put a over there i will just get the msc as my first attempt so it seems like the best tree here will, will be the largest will be the um will be the largest or maybe i can try seven here I just twenty three. So I think the so what um, when we go to go up to eight, we will have the lowest MSE. But um, this is just going to show you that for the tree method, we can do both classification and regression problem. So, um, but the problem for our tree method is that um, it could be overfeeding for uh, if we don't uh, make a smaller trees. So then that's uh, when the random forest and random forest come to help. So for random forest. Um, we are not using all the variables when we making the when when we when we making the split. So we can specify we can we can specify the number of variables that we want to use. So usually is the is so the number of variable we want to use for random forest for uh, as a empirical rules is the square root of number of um, predictor. So let's say if I have twelve predict uh, so if I have sixteen um, uh, variables, then I probably want to specify the, the variables that we are going to use in random forest equal to four so uh, by doing that we can so that random forest is actually randomly selecting four or for in our case four variables of total 16 variables and each time using only those four variables to make a, a make a tree so um, it sounds like um, we're only using a subset of variables it doesn't make sense at the beginning but you but for most of the real um, real life uh, examples, uh, we might have like for example two or uh, um, uh, two or three variables that are highly correlated. So for by using a subset of the variables, we can avoiding to select those highly co correlated um, variables. So if we probably for the four that we select um for doing the random forest those four can be like uh, very independent they are not high, highly correlated so after when when we when we making like a thousand of trees and then when we take the average those um those model will not be highly correlated if we so if we use all the variables and then using using the tree method all the all the trees at um at, at each each iteration can look almost the same since they are using all the variables and all the highly correlated all the highly highly correlated variables will show up in, in in the model but if we randomly select four out of 16 then the for each uh, trees we we made the trees can be very different and then we can we can see that um which variable are more are are the most important to to the, our dependent variables so we can using a subset of variables to avoid overfitting and then and then um uh and then avoid and then uh decorrelated the uh, between the uh all the variables so that's the theory so but the but for the for the algorithm in r uh, it's just like um it's just you just call the random forest so now i'm going to show you an example Yeah, so you can see that um, even I so for here I use all the third I use all all the variables here. So this is a method called bagging. So uh, we can see that actually you can see that the MSC is actually like um, is actually um, already smaller than the than the than the best model. We not, that's not the best model, but um, it's already smaller. Uh, we get uh, we already get a smaller MSE uh, compared to the tree, to the uh, to the tree method, so you can see that um, if now let's say for let's say I'm using um, only four variables, we can see that uh, our MSE is even smaller. So we can see that by selecting a subset of the of all variables, it can actually help us to uh, to prevent uh, pr to prevent overfitting. And then we can we can see that which are what are the variables that are um, that are important. So we can see that for let's say the first two variables are very important for our um, uh, dependent variables. So uh, by using random forest, we can remove 
um, not remove, but uh, we can avoiding or fitting by by selecting um, like um, by avoiding selecting the highly correlated variables when we when we uh, make the trees. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another method called boosting. So the boosting, I'm going to explain the difference between boosting and backing in a while uh, uh, later. But now I'm just going to show you the, how to apply this um, in R. So we're going to use the library and then uh, using the function uh, GMB. So here we are saying the distribution equal to Gaussian, which means we're doing a regression uh, problem. So for the classification, I believe uh, we have to specify the distribution to Bernoullian. So um, this is the only difference for classification and regression method. And for n tree n dot trees, we're we're just use we're just going up to five thousand trees, and then for the tr for each of the tree size, we are only go down to four uh, in depth. And then we can actually do the prediction and th uh, get the uh, MSE. So actually, it's pretty it's it's very close to the random forest. And let's see. Now I'm going to add another parameter for uh, as a shrinkage, which I'm going to explain later on. Uh, on uh, explain more about on boosting. So if we add a shrinkage to point two, let's see if there's an improvement here. Well, it actually didn't. So maybe. Um, so this is a parameter we can later we can later on adjust, and then to see if we can minimize this number. But there is a parameter that allows you to adjust, so that um, they can help you to uh, improve your prediction. So for bagging, so the difference between bagging and boosting is that um, in bagging we are uh, making we are making a parallel. We are we are. Um, Doing the algorithm, we are doing multiple algorithm or doing multiple run, uh, trees in the same times, and but we are only but we each time we are selecting from our um, we are selecting a subset of data set from the training set um, randomly with replacement. So um, so each time we are select so each time we are selecting different. Um, Different subset of the training set, and then in each subset, we are going to use cross validation to improve the prediction. So, as we can see in the in the bagging method, that already help us to um, to um, to um, to avoid overfitting. And then for boosting method, is that. Uh, um, so for boosting method, we are doing, we are, we are making, um, we are, we are uh, making the trees in a sequential, uh, in a in, in a series. So for example, so after when we when we finish the first tree, um, and then we are going to use the model to um, to predict um, to predict on on the on the. On the data that we did not select in the in the in the first iteration, and then we will see that for some of the prediction, it is um, the the first model is well well is um is uh, is um uh, uh it predicts very well, but for some of the data points, it does it it it, it may not get a, a good prediction. So for those data points, they are more likely to be selected in your second training set. So after doing after your in, so in your second tra training sets those those um, data points that are not um, they're not uh, predicted um, they're not very they're not uh, predicting um, very well will be will be selected in your in your second iteration. So as long as you keep going on, so that each time you are adjusting your uh, model based on the based on your Based on your previous prediction, and those um, those um, those uh, bad prediction will come up more often in your second in your next trial. So so this is the difference between boosting and bagging. So for bagging, you are you are you are doing uh, a lot of training at the same time, and then and then you take the average for that to to minimize your variance, and then to make a to avoid overfitting. 
to make a better uh, to to get a, a a good prediction power. But for boosting, you are doing sequentially, so that you are you are taking care. You are sl you are gradually taking care of your um, your um, data points at each iteration, and then gradually improving your 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 method. So um, so this is the difference for backing between uh, backing and boosting. So in this video, I covered um, tree based method and then random forest, which avoid the um, uh, highly correlated uh, variables, and then we. And then the bagging and boosting method for uh, to improve to reduce variance, avoid overfitting, and improve your prediction power. So um, thank you very much for watching, and let me know if you have any question and and leave any, uh, and leave uh, if you have any. Uh, so feel free to comment in uh, in the in, in below. So um, thank you very much.